Hello! In today's video, we are going to have a look at how to create a basic cinematic. So here it goes. Let's get into it. To create a cinematic in Unreal, we are going to use Sequencer. And to use Sequencer, we need to go to this icon here, click it and add a new level. So we are going to choose where we want to save it and I'm going to go to this location and name it Cinematic. And now, uh, as you see, we have a new menu popping up here. And this is our sequencer. Of course, this is our timeline. It's uh, very intuitive. And this is our track. To actually create a sequence or cinematic, we are going to need a camera. So we can just add a camera. And now we have this camera here. It's a bit uh, not positioned too well. So we need to deal with that. You can navigate through the level the same way as you are in the level and uh, you can position it somewhere you want it. But for now this is good. So if you noticed here, we have this pilot active scene camera actor. So this, is, uh, this tells us that we can actually change the position of the camera and if we want to exit this, we can just press this button here. And now, as you see, if I deselect my camera, I'm back at my viewport as my default camera. And uh, don't get uh, scared, you can actually easily go into the camera again. If you go to perspective and go to scene camera, you're into the camera again. Pretty easy, right? Next, now that we have this camera and we have it on the track, we have to deal with a few settings. So if you go to your track here and select your camera, uh, right now I'm uh, I have selected world settings, but we need details to have the camera details. We can actually change uh, uh, all the camera settings. So if you are a photo uh, photographer or you have uh, done any filming in real life, probably these settings are very familiar with you. To you. However, if not, uh, you can just go to film back and if we switch from digital to DSLR, you will notice that now we have a bit more uh, space. It, it, our lens now catches uh, more of our screen. So we can now position our camera and on top of that, on top of that, if we go to current focal length, we can select anything uh, like we can do 40 and now it's a bit uh, less wide and you can uh, play with it but for this uh, example I think 35 is uh, pretty good now we can just position the camera and uh, this is okay for our purposes maybe a bit closer and uh, now you are going to notice that probably uh, that our character that should be in focus is a bit blurred and that is uh, not uh, really okay we want our character to be in focus so how can we do that well if you go to focus settings so if it's not expanded just expand it and now uh, here we have a menu and we have this menu of focus distance so you can change it, but uh, maybe you, you won't notice any uh, difference. So to actually see any difference, we can actually use this draw debug focus plane. And this is actually the plane where uh, the camera has uh, focus. So now if we decrease this, the plane will come towards us and just before like uh, going to the character something like that now our character is actually in focus so i don't know if you can notice this let me maximize the screen but now our character is pretty in focus and our background is pretty blurred and even the trees here 
So we have our character in focus, which is what we desire. And now that we have the character in focus, we are actually ready to animate our camera. So if you have done any animation in Maya or 3ds Max or any kind of animation, you will be familiar with uh, keyframe animation. And it's very simple. So if you go to your camera and if this is not expand, uh, expanded, you can expand it and we need the transform. So now that we have the transform selected, you can just press this plus button here icon plus icon so if we press it we notice that we get this uh, circle red circle here and now if we go to the end and press again we have another circle so nothing happens uh, between these uh, two points because we have not animated anything so here in the zero, I want the camera transform or rather the camera location to be this exact location here. And if I just click on this dot here on this circle, it will automatically go here. And I want on this uh, point in time in five seconds. So uh, also if uh, this is not uh, in uh, seconds uh, to you, you can go to this uh, here 30 fps that it says and you can go to show time and you can use seconds so yeah you can uh, use frames if you are more comfortable with uh, but i use seconds also you can uh, do your frames uh, 24 frames which is uh, always if you do a cinematic use 24 uh, but right now we have uh, selected this point in time so now we want the camera to move right well all we need to do is actually move the camera and uh, if i press and hold the right mouse button i can rotate it it's the same as in the editor so i can just press uh, my uh, right uh, mouse button and press uh, w to go forward and position my frame as if i want it uh, this will be my end frame so now that i have my end frame if I go back, oops, sorry. I need to well, position your end frame here. And now you need to press again the plus sign. So now that I have my end frame, you see the camera is actually moving and it's moving slowly. You can go crazy with this and uh, create some crazy movement if you want, but I want to show you just uh, the basics of uh, this uh, sequencer but also you will notice something that when i play it it starts slowly goes uh, well it's lagging a bit but kind of it starts slowly then uh, it ends uh, slowly this is because uh, uh, this keys if we uh, press the animation here and go to sorry this happens because if you right click on these dots it says cubic and this is uh, the way the camera is uh, slowly easing in and uh, easing out but we don't need this actually we don't want this and uh, to uh, deal with this we need to make it linear so right click on this and make it linear and right click on this and make it linear or you can drag anywhere select them and right click and make them both linear at the same time and now if i uh, play in this uh, animation there is uh, well it's lagging so you can't really see it but there is no easing in and easing out it's constant movement and this is uh, how uh, the cinematics are actually made you don't go easing in and easing out is very it doesn't look natural at all so now we have animation, we have, uh, we have our frames and everything set up and it's time to actually see how to actually export this uh, sequence. To export this, we can go to this menu here, render this movie, but before that we need to make sure that in camera cuts we have the whole, um, whole thing, uh, like this is our camera cut and this is like a cinematic cut. 
I can have a few cameras here and have different camera cuts. So because I have only one, this needs to be till the end and only one. So make sure that's uh, to the end because if you extend your end, this won't extend together with your end. So if I go here, you see it doesn't come here. So to actually uh, render our video, well, we can use uh, this uh, render this movie to a video button and uh, we have this menu here. Uh, use custom frame rate and use 24 FPS for sure. It says film, I mean, it even says it in, <laughs> in the description. This is uh, always what you need to use for cinematics. And you can choose your resolution, it doesn't matter. And here is our output format. Again, you can uh, output this in uh, JPEG or PNG and then just combine it in any editing software and make a video out of it. For example, if you use Premiere Pro, you can actually Im import all this uh, sequence of images to your Premiere Pro and uh, it will act as a video. Uh, again, compression quality, you can just uh, put 100 here and we have this uh, output directory here. You can choose where you want to uh, save your video and uh, you, we can save uh, this format and you can uh, capture video. I'm not going to capture it, but uh, when you press capture video, it will actually let's do it. Let's save and let me show you. It will actually show you this screen here where it's well it's in my other monitor amazing uh, can i drag it here and it will be kind of slow depending on your pc i guess uh, and um, it, it's going to render but as you see this uh, this this vegetation here it took uh, a few seconds to actually appear and that may be a problem. So uh, let me show you how to deal with that. If we scroll down and here in animation, if we expand it, you can see we have a few settings here. And what we're going to use is warm up frame count. And I set this to 100. So it will be probably zero at the beginning or some other value, but for me, it's uh, 100 and what it's going to do is actually it's going to render a hundred frames and it will let us actually wall the level and when it uh, actually after it renders uh, 100 frames it will actually start rendering for real the video and uh, this is not going to have uh, this won't be included in the video this is just warming up so now as you see when I start the video, everything is loaded and uh, everything looks uh, pretty good. So let's see in the end. And now if I let me open my view, you see, it starts from here. Everything looks good. So this is how you can deal with uh, things loading and uh, kind of not having half of your level present when the video starts. So now that you know the basics of a sequencer and how to make a cinematic, let me actually show you a few tips. If you are wondering, for example, the sun, uh, it's uh, pretty big, right? The way to make it big, and I went over that actually uh, in my lighting video, is to go select your directional light and go to source angle. And uh, the default one is like something like this. And it's look, it's so small, you don't even see it. But if you go to 20, you can make it uh, super big. You can even go more or less, but you can play with it. And uh, that's that's a way to actually make your sun a bit bigger. Also, if you're wondering uh, how am I getting this uh, god rays, you can first you need in exponential uh, height fog, you need to have volumetric fog and in your direction, uh, directional light, you can enable the light shaft occlusion. So if I disable this, this is how the scene looks. This doesn't look too bad uh, as well. It may actually look better depending on how you see it. 
but if you enable this you you have this uh, god rays and you can control the god lay uh, sorry <laughs> the god rays a few uh, different ways uh, for example if you go to exponential high fog and uh, here in scatter distribution you can uh, change this and uh, the fog will like uh, react to it you see you can have uh, a lot more and let me get back to this or maybe even increase it actually why not and this looks uh, pretty nice i guess another way to control uh, the fog is like with this you see so uh, this is a good way to control the fog and now we have a very foggy very foggy scene maybe i can i can do something like this it doesn't look too bad but now you have your god race here also the scene like you you have this nice bloom you can go to post process volume and go to bloom and i did these settings for the bloom uh, but yeah it, it it looks uh in my opinion it looks pretty nice and uh, yeah these are the extra tips i would uh, wanted to I, I want to share with you and i really hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something and uh, i hope i see you in the next video so see ya